Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Dan, who just brought us the first part of a new series called Overcome. And today we looked at overcoming sin. Welcome, Pastor Dan. Thank Good you. to have you back here today. And so today we looked at, and you gave us really three truths around overcoming sin. Mm -hmm. And we talked about having the right approach, and you gave us some practical ways that we could overcome sin. And you gave us two, really, mm -hmm. talking about prayer being a very important part of that and right. also putting in some safeguards. Okay. Um, we actually didn't have questions come in, but I have some of my own questions that okay. I'm going to ask you. Um, what are some other practical ways that we can um, put into practice to overcome sin? Sure. Well, I think one of the most hopeful and helpful will be something near and dear to your heart, and that's being in community. Mm -hmm. You really cannot underestimate the importance of having people around you, preferably of the same sex, who you can bear your soul to mm. uh, on a pretty regular basis. Um, I have a group that I meet with usually every Friday, and I cannot tell you the number of times I have resisted temptation because I knew I was going to have to confess my sin to them <laughs> on, on Friday, and I didn't want to be the, the confessor. Uh, so community really, really helps. Mm -hmm. Uh, closely related to that, of course, is community for service, being on a serve team or going on a mission trip. Uh, the devil really does use idle hands. Uh, that Not having something to do is a bad, bad thing. Mm. So keeping yourself busy for kingdom purposes is um, a really good thing. Um, of course, and there's no substitute for staying in the Word, a regular devotional life. That mm -hmm. keeps our mind focused where it needs to be mm -hmm. and off of places that it shouldn't. So That's good. I'd recommend those. That's good. And so as I think through um, all the truths today, you know, there is the component that no matter, I can just think about, no matter how hard I try, even today probably, before I even go to bed, I will ultimately fail in some way. Sure. I will trip. Up and no matter how hard I try, there will be something in some capacity that I sin today. Sure. Um, just our sinful nature. So, what happens, or what do I do when I find myself in that situation? Well, what we are tempted to do is run, mm -hmm. uh, like Adam and Eve, go and hide. We're uh, ashamed. We're convicted. We're embarrassed. We think surely God is done with us. Um, but in fact, what he desperately wants us to do is to come and find him uh, and deal with it. Don't let it get bigger and bigger. Uh, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess, he's faithful and just mm -hmm. to forgive. And I think my most favorite image in the entire Bible is uh, from the story of the prodigal son. While he was still a long way off, it says, uh, his father saw him and he began to run toward him. And every time I read that story, um, it uh, touches my heart. And it just reminds me that God's not my enemy. He, mm. he's, he's my friend more than I want to be his friend. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. And so when I do sin and come to him, should I, should I have like a regular pattern of confession? Is this... I, I think that's best. Just uh, to God I, or... I, is well, there something that says that I should also be confessing to? I would say people? certainly always to God. Mm -hmm. and, and my habit is um, in my daily prayer time, I do a 24-hour inventory. I, I just mm -hmm. think in my mind back over the last 24 hours and ask God to show me where, where did I lose my temper? Where did I say something hurtful or inappropriate? Where did I think bad thoughts? You know, and, and He brings them to mind. Mm -hmm. And so... I just keep short accounts, 24 hours, it's dealt with, it's done. But then, too, there are those occasions where I need to go to a person and say, I am very sorry, I should not have done that, would you please forgive me? Uh, sometimes that's my spouse, sometimes that's my children, sometimes that's my coworkers. Uh, sometimes it's people I don't even know. Like, uh, I remember on one occasion, 
I was just in a bad mood. And I was very rude to uh, this little worker at a Chick-fil-A and felt justified in the moment. But once the spirit began to convict, uh, after I choked down my meal, <laughs> I had to walk back up to the counter and just say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that was wrong of, of me. Um, I've learned that the more we obey when those little promptings come, the easier it gets and the softer my heart gets. Mm -hmm. and, and the opposite is also true. When I just say, no, I'm not gonna do it, it becomes easier to say no the next mm -hmm. time and the little crusty shell it gets harder and harder. around my heart, yeah. It gets harder. Um, so I know that um, when you sin, that confession and forgiveness is important, but talk to me about where grace factors into that. How does that come into the process? Right, well, grace is a wonderful thing and uh, can be a dangerous thing. And here's, here's what I mean. Uh, grace, of course, is unmerited favor. It, it's God's love coming to us even though we do not deserve it. And it's always there. It's greater than all of our sin, as the old hymn says. But because we are sinful, it is very easy to presume upon. Mm. And I am as guilty as anyone of having been in a situation where I was tempted to do something wrong and I consciously thought, well, he'll forgive me. <laughs> and I just went ahead and did it. Um, that's not the right approach to grace. Mm. Uh, the right approach to grace, of course, is one of gratitude. Uh, for what Jesus has done for us and letting that uh, experience of receiving grace motivate me toward more holiness of life rather than what I can get away with. Mm, that's good. That's yeah. good. Great message today and all good truths that we can apply. I'm excited to hear more about overcoming Thanks. in the next few weeks. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.